high class pipe I have come to just undergo the chapter habits of animals in our previous lecture we have studied regarding the other chapter and I hope you have studied the chapter chapter number one and you also have gone through the www bsnes.in where you got all the exercise question answers done here after this lecture you will get that again into that website www.bsnes.in there you can get all the questions of this chapter as well let us see i hope you're all all right and little drop studies are going on also well it is chapter two of your science book and your learning objectives today is is that the terrestrial animals and their habitats aquatic animals and their habitats then hibernation and migration and along with the hibernation we will come to know some new event of the animals also which is usually not find or found in the books all right well you see you know every organism has a particular home the habitat is nothing but a home of the plants and animals of a certain place you know all the plants cannot stay in a same place because the mountain plants can grow in mountain the aquatic plants can grow inside the water or near the water and the terrestrial plants that means the land plants they grow on the land now this surroundings where the organisms fit themselves and suit themselves and can undergo reproduction to keep their generation successfully is known as the habitat and you see in the animals there are terrestrial habitats are there which is divided into four types four types of terrestrial habitats are there number one forest have you ever gone to a forest well near our school or in the surroundings of our particular place Bagdogra and Siliguri plenty of forests are there Sevak forest and go to some Panigata and all those there you will get some forests are there and the forests have definitely some different characteristics in forest lot of animals they live right in the forest on top of the trees and sometimes on the soil of the forest so this is how that is created the animals like lions tigers jackals foxes wild dogs and etc oh yes obviously the herbivores like deers elephants and also also there and these are the dwellers of the forest they stay there because the forest is their home the forest habitat is their home right in the forest I told you the animals which live on trees also there like squirrel monkeys and they are known as arboreal animals what animals arboreal animals the animals which live on land like lion tiger they are called land animals and in the land animals there are several animals of that they go for the prey and some are scavengers finding the dead and decayed remains of the plants and animals to feed them up and the monkeys squirrels and all those are arboreal animals they live on the plant they sometimes come down sometimes come down on the floor of the forest to collect the nuts and also they go up into the plants some animals especially the birds they live on the trees they are volant v-o-l-a-n-t or aerial creatures so they stay on that particular plants but they go and collect their food and all those from the surroundings like i tell you the example of the birds of prey that is the falcon or hawk 
king fisher these are the birds of prey king fisher goes for fishing and goes you see if you have seen and gone near a river and all so king fisher at first flies up then suddenly it comes down swooping down into the water dips and catches the fish and flies away the hawk and falcon are the birds of prey they not only even catch the fish they can also catch the small animals like the rabbits hares and all so that is how they do and continue their life in the forest well another terrestrial habit is desert you know in desert the characteristics of the animals and plants are different why are they different because for this surrounding you see extreme temperature during the day extreme cold during the night lot of sand storms scarcity of water so these are the things the animals and the plants to withstand and to withstand those things general body posture is not enough so they are to change themselves accordingly to suit to the surroundings of the habitats and that's why the new characteristics they adopt adapt means they create and to create to stay safely suitably to continue their generation like that in desert the desert first thing is that if you have a plant it is having deep root and the stem is flat thin and green to prepare the food and then the animals they have double eyelashes one transparent eyelash is there through which while there is sandstorm they can see and go and that eyelash helps to prevent the eye on the other hand they have warts on the body which withstand the temperatures obviously and there is a famous animal in the desert that the leaf that you know very dear to you is the camel the camel is known as the desert sheep why you know the camel can walk through the desert long times and with quite a speed why you know it's fit all the fit is having large area and it is padded so that they can withstand the heat and can go nicely hello have you seen a camel if you are not see the picture or sometimes you can go through some videos to find out the camel camel has lot of hair so the top of the body which adjust the heat and in the body the less far is there on the other hand camel can drink a lot of water at a time so it can stay without water for a long time so they, they this is these are the these are the adaptations of the camel like that there are some animals are there especially the lizards and all they stay during the whole day they stay inside the burrows because to withstand the heat at night they comes out most of the reptiles that they stay in the desert is nocturnal what is nocturnal that they come for the prey at night and one more special thing is that most of the reptiles staying in the desert is very very venomous that means they are very poisonous well now we come to the next land animal habitat that is the terrestrial habitat which is known as the mountains you go to the mountains definitely you will see some changes in the animals appear the goats in the mountain they have little bit of change in their hooves so that they can climb up the hills and mountains easily and they have all the powers they can climb and they can jump they are not getting hurt like the goats found in the plains so these animals mostly have furs on their bodies and all those so to which some the cold well well another habitat is there in the terrestrial habitat that is known as the polar regions 
you know there are polar regions on the earth south pole and the north pole and these polar regions are having peculiar animals some of them are very huge like the polar bear the polar bear the grizzly bear seal walrus all those animals are there and they withstand the extreme cold condition so they have the thick fat layers inside the body and they have long hairs inside the body also there are one more wonderful creature is there found in the cold regions it is known as the silver fox the fox with the silver color so that is also there and they can they make themselves suitable by changing little bit in their body and suit to the surroundings to live to rear the generation and continue the life next we come to the aquatic animals the aquatic animals means the animals those who stay in the water in the water and that is you know there are two kinds of aquatic habitat is there one is ocean or marine habitat another one is fresh water habitat why marine habitat you know the sea and oceans are having salty water they are the water is having lots of salt in it and that is why they are saline water and the animals are here are completely different they have different adaptations have you gone through sometimes to see a whale or the dolphin they are not feces they are mammals they breathe through the lung and what happens you know they have a special characteristic that once they take the oxygen while they come up to the surface of the water and they can stay very long time but whales do one beautiful things that there is a hole in the nostrils with that they release the water when they take the oxygen in so well and there is dolphin is also there have you heard or sometimes have seen the dolphin is very very friendly creature and you see some films and all those that the dolphins are coming and helping the human beings and all those some trained dolphins in a huge aquarium of japan and all those can even interact with the human beings so that is the speciality of the dolphins of there well we come to the fresh water habitat in fresh water habitat we have the rivers ponds hills and lakes also there and there are some special characteristics are also there like that one is amphibian amphibian is a creature which lives part of the life on land and the part of the life in the water these amphibians for example toad frog salamander these are the animals they can stay half the life on land and half of the life in the water mostly they hatch in the water that means they start the life in the water like toad and frog and even salamander also also and fresh water means that there is no percentage of saline present in it so they can easily breed themselves there and can increase in their right. on the ocean you see the octopus they move with the tentacles now my dear children there are very very fearsome stories about the octopus is there but i say you it's not when you grow up you will know the size of of the octopus ranges from just tiny 1 cm to the giant octopus which is having 8 ft long tentacles and it is really the 8 ft one is really little bit of fearsome while the small octopus is very small octopus is a very good food for the people staying near the sea it gives lot of proteins and as it is a seafood it has lots of iron and all those present is there but i am not saying you to just have octopus you might taste someone sometimes when you go to a restaurant all right well there are other animals also there the sharks sharks are you very dangerous ones but there are very nice sharks are also there hammerhead sharks and all those in sea and the ocean you get 
द वेरी डेंजरस इलेक्ट्रिक रे एंड एन इलेक्ट्रिक रे कैरीज अ वोल्टेज ऑफ टू थाउजेंड वॉट्स एट अ टाइम हुई कैन इवन इंस्टेंटली किल्ड एन एलिफेंट ऑल्स सो मज बी वेरी वेरी केयरफुल एंड वेन यू गो देर इज अनदर क्रिएचर हुई इज द मोस्ट वेनमस स्नेक ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ द अर्थ दिस इज नोन एज सी कोबरा दे really bite very very calm and cool animals but once they bite it is dangerous because they are 10 times more poisonous than that of the most poisonous snake snake on the surface of the earth so they are very dangerous ones but one positive thing is they are they seldom bite they are very cool creatures even if you touch them they never bite unless and until they are harm well in fresh water there you get some muscles also there what muscles muscles are the small pearl holding thing you know the pearls that is reared in the muscles fresh water muscles and all those and in the sea also if you see the fresh water muscles there are also pearls but in the sea there are good muscles are there especially in basra the gulf country the best pearl is produced inside the muscles the people take out the pearl and sell them and it is expensive as well as very good also well we come to ocean ocean type of habitat and the fresh water habitat there are so many animals are there which if we can discuss we can go on and go on it will never finish even in one life so there are several animals are there and we can just go through them well we come to the next point which is known as hibernation now the hibernation is the water as soon as we hear we feel little bit sleepy not you not i but the hibernation means a long winter sleep some animals they remain inside the burrows or in their dwellings for the winter and for this they get the preparation throughout 3 or 4 months they go on feeding keep fats collected in their body reserved because during this hibernation they cannot eat food and they can only just continue their life so breathing is necessary and that is they do hibernation is found in frog have you seen the frog here we tell uh, tell them it's a long leg ones and they sound nya mu nya mu during the rainy season why do they come in the summer rainy season because after the winter long winter sleep they come and they reproduce during the rainy season and that is the call by which they call mating call it is known as mating call so this is a species which is known as frog and frog does it there is another very familiar species which are present here in our country especially in this north bengal region they are known as toad and toad is warty fat and short height frog is tall triangular head and long leg calls very loudly the people say they call the rain it's not it's actually breeding call while the toad they are opposite they never hibernate but they estivate what it is estivation so what is the opposite of the hibernation that is estivation what is estivation am i telling the truth yes you can go to the wikipedia and can search whether estivation is there so as hibernation is the winter sleep sleep long winter sleep estivation is the long summer sleep during summer they store they keep themselves sleeping only keep their life by breathing and then during the winter they come out to reproduce so in winter you find 
the toads and in rainy season summer season you get the frog well now you see with toad and frog hibernation and estivation comes so hibernation is long winter sleep while estivation is long summer sleep well although you are in class 5 but you should know this frog is known as rana r a n a in scientific name short form of the scientific name and this is the toad is known as bufo b u f o so it's a big name i'm not going to disclose it to you just you know rana and bufo the rana is the winter sleep they undergo that is known as hibernation toad which is known as bufo under is estivation that summer sleep and that is how they continue their life well we come to another characteristics of the animals are known as the migration what is migration migration is the periodic change of habitat to keep themselves suitable to the surrounding and to rear the new generation successfully after migration all the animals and birds migrated they go back to their own place so migration is a purposeful movement of the animals like migration is found in flamingo cranes and the largest area covered by migration is the african elephant by walk but some birds that they come from siberia to 2000 km calcutta juge hill and that is there still and you can go to raiganj bharatpur there you can see lots of birds are coming as a migratory birds but children you know the most of the migratory birds they come in a place which is known as gurna island in gurna island you see the country earns the most of the money by selling the droppings of the birds my god you see go to the river i mean i mean the sea uh, inlets and all there all the droppings of the bird has been deposited for thousands and thousands of years and the government of guinea island they sell those in huge amount of money and the number of birds you cannot imagine if you sometimes go to the guinea island it's amazing various styles very colorful and what not is there and you see one more thing you will find the fishes those part of gulf is full of fishes that means that is why the birds come because easy easy prey they get the fishes they get plenty of food good surroundings no disturbance so they can rear the generation nice so this is a migration migration is done by the eel in the sea a long fish in uh, i mean in our country also it is sometimes uh, is eaten but this that is the thing so uh, for the migration the african elephants also change the places and the cranes you see long leg ones they also fly fly from far up places stay in the warm up places gets their reproduction completed by laying them because they are uh, herbivores so they lay the eggs and rear the young ones the chickens the chickens grow into big birds and by the season they fly back to their home so this is called migration right now we have a review for the chapter what we have studied right now is that that we are studying uh, the habitats of animals and your learning objectives is the terrestrial animals and their habitats in terrestrial habitats we have the forest desert mountain polar region and in aquatic animals and their habitats we have ocean and the freshwater habitats then we have two very special characteristics of the animals that we have come to one is hibernation the long winter sleep and especially not only one animal but i am telling one special example is the frog and the other one is the estivation the long summer sleep and where the toad is doing it now telling something special for this 
Do you know every animal and even plants they need to respire and if they do not respire they will die. Now these animals like toad and frog are having peculiar kind of respiration during their winter sleep and the summer sleep. Usually toads and frogs having four types of respiratory organs during their life. One when they were tadpole that means hatched out from the egg that times they have external gills the gills present outside the body as they grow the external gills fall and as the external gills fall the lung is already been grown inside and developed so that time they breathe through the lung then they can they can also breathe and do respiration through their skin when you know because the frog and toad they met for the reproduction in the water and as they meet in the water the male and female makes the mating so most of the times their body remains down beneath the water so it's very difficult for them to breathe through the nostril so that is why they breathe through the moist skin and this is known as the respiration by skin it's having a scientific name that cutaneous respiration but you are not to know you know only that they respire through the skins and on the other hand when they undergo hibernation and activation that time they keep their body inside the barrel only keep the mouth out in the opening and what is happening you know in the mouth there is a fine membrane is there membrane samaste ho parda and through this membrane they can exchange the gases from the atmosphere this is known as buccal respiration that means the respiration respiration through the mouth membrane so this is about the hibernation and by migration you have come to know the animals and birds they to get the suitable surroundings to rear the new generations they go and change their place periodically at least once in a year and this is known as the migration so children you have come to know about the chapter what is known as the habitats of the animals i hope you will study and your question answers you will get it in www.bsnes.in thank you and have a good day and looking forward to come to meet you in the next lecture thank you